Hello, I'm Cara Stanford, and this is The Marketing Spaces. So we're on our final video of Metrics Unmuddled. We've taken a few minutes to consider the difference between activity measurements and outcome measurements. We've also looked at correlative and causal. So let's now look at the third and final one, which is the big question. Is my marketing actually working? And this may be a question that you've asked yourself, or it could be something that somebody has challenged you on, has said to you, does your marketing actually work? Let's look at how we can actually answer this question. Quick recap, um, obviously one of the big things that we discussed was there in the marketing activities you're doing and measuring those activities and all of the activities lead to an outcome. And what we know that is that as marketers, we are working with a lot of correlative um, actions and activities. We very rarely have a causal link. It's very rare I do X and Y happens. It's what is much more common with marketing is I do A, B, C, and D, and they all come together like this lovely chord here. And because they all come together, they lead to a certain outcome. So we need to keep that in mind as we move through to answer the question. Let's look at some facts first. The facts are we are all marketing to people. This sounds obvious, but I meet people that go, no, we organize to, we market to organizations, to businesses. Great. Who do you, who do you market to? Who, who's making that purchase decision in the organization? Well, it's complicated. It might be the CEO, but it might be the purchasing controller. It might be the um, chief accountant, chief financial advisor, right? They're people. Oh, no, no, no. We market to government. It's not the same marketing to government. OK, so when you market to government, who, who, who's making that decision? Well, you know, initially it might be that um, a civil servant decides that that's what we need. And then a minister might have to sign it off and then that will go to a purchasing team. They're people. These are all people. We are all marketing to people. Whoever you are, whatever you're selling, nobody at the moment is marketing to a robot. We are marketing to people. Let's get that very, very clear. Because we are marketing to people, people are a nuisance. We are a nuisance. We have all of these hopes and fears and thoughts and dreams and ideas. We've got cultural biases. We've got things going on in our head. We might on a good day be receptive to something which on a bad day we might not even look twice at. All of this stuff going on. This is the thing about marketing to people. We're messy. We are messy. And so as marketers, we are looking for patterns. That's why we group people into segments. But people are people. We have to take this into account as marketers. And what this means for us as marketers is that when it comes to our buyers, the buyer's journey and people moving through that buyer's journey, making that decision, do we go with this organization? Do we engage with this organization? Do we choose this business or not? It means that everybody's buyer's journey can take a different amount of time. And yeah, of course, we group people together in segments so we get an idea of the amounts of time, but it means that it could take a different amount of time. That's really important to understand. It's not, I put out a piece of awareness marketing, I get buyers now instantly because nobody buys or engages. And the reason I use the word engage is perhaps you're in an organization that isn't selling anything. You might be in a charitable organization where what you wish to gain is, um, is donations or what you wish to gain is people's time or support. Perhaps you're in a lobbying organization where what you need is people's attention and for them to engage with the ideas that you're saying. So nobody though buys or engages because of one single piece of marketing. Doesn't happen. There is no marketing magic wand silver bullet do this one thing and your business is going to go. No, it is a culmination of many, many things. People are complicated. And we make purchase decisions and engagement decisions based on many, many things. Remember our twisted rope. Remember the rope with all of the different strands. So when it comes to answering the question, is my marketing working? We need to keep all of these facts in mind. The big reason that people's marketing doesn't work is because the objectives that either they have set for themselves or they have been given aren't realistic. Example one, how long does it take for your audience to move through each stage of the buyer's journey? I once was brought into an organization. They said to me, oh, 
we've brought this marketer in. They're meant to be really good, really good track record, but they've been here three months and we're not seeing anything. We've not had any sales come through as a result of them. I went, okay. So that's really interesting because I sat in a management team meeting with you yesterday and you told me it takes 12 months for someone to buy something because you've got a complicated sell. And they went, yeah. So the guy's been here three months. He's nine months away from a new customer. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, so are your objectives realistic? How long does it take somebody to move through that buyer's journey? Does that, is that reflected in the objectives that you've been set or you are setting for yourself? Is your marketing working? There are a series of activities that need to be done to get the outcome we want. Are those activities happening? Are those activities working well? Are those activities happening? Are they getting the outcomes you want? Are they working well together? Are they the right activities at the right time? And sometimes it could be they're the right activities, but not at the right intensity. The example that I always give is um, after I had my second child and I decided I am going to walk 11,100 steps a day. And I decided this when he was about one-ish. Every day I walked 11,100 steps and I lost not a pound of weight and I got not a chop fitter. I was doing the right activity. What's going on? And then I realized the intensity was wrong because I was walking it at the pace of a small child who I was having to drag along or cajole or walk at their very, very tiny pace because they were only just learning to walk. Right activity, wrong intensity. Is that what's happening with you? Right activities, wrong intensity, wrong message. Right activities, wrong message. What is it? Is your marketing working? It might be that you're doing all of the right things, but in the wrong way. Then there's the time and resource. If perhaps like that first example I gave, you've got a 12 month buyer's journey and you're on month three, then no, you are not going to be getting sales. Your marketing is really important to help people carry on moving through the journey, but you're not going to get a sale until 12 months. The big thing here is, does your organization, does your company have the time and the money to be able to fund people through that whole buyer's journey? If you have a buyer's journey that takes three months for somebody to become aware of you, to become a paying customer, and you've only got the cash to last two months, then it's not going to work. Do you have that money? Do you have that time to wait three months? And one of the big things with marketing is we're constantly testing. So I recently worked with a startup business and the first three months were spent testing. It's like, right, let's try this advert. What's gonna work best? Is it an advert here or is it an advert here? It wasn't just testing where the advert was. Is it an advert with this message or this type of message? Is it an advert to this region or this region? Is it an advert to this group of people or this group of people? All of these different variables had to be tested. That was what the first three months were spent. That needed money. That needed time. Once we had three months worth of data, we could say, right, that is really interesting. We now know that this particular type of advert on this platform to this one group of professionals operating in these two UK cities had the best results. So clearly the next three months were focused on those things. It's kind of like, right, we've tried all the others. Let's spend three months focused on it. Then the sales started coming through six months. That took six months. So when we say, or somebody asks you, is your marketing working? It's how realistic are the objectives? How realistic are they? And how realistic are their expectations or your expectations? The other thing to look at is, are there any blocks in the funnel? I was involved in an organization where they were saying, oh, the marketing doesn't work. Marketing doesn't work. So I went and looked through, obviously, you know, I looked at all the data. I mean, that's really interesting. Your marketing campaigns are bringing on average 20 leads into the business. You know, we can see there are 20 people from different organizations that are really engaging. What have you done with those leads? Well, the marketing isn't working. What have you done with those leads? Well, have you phoned them? Well, no, because we're too busy to phone, so you've not phoned them. Well, no, have you reached out to them personally? Well, no, because that's what marketing does. No, nope, we know that there's a personal sell involved in your product. So your marketing is working. It's bringing the leads and you're doing nothing with them. So always check what's going on at each stage of the funnel too. 
a few things that I would invite you to make some space to consider. Is my marketing working? What are the behaviors and influences that affect your audience's decision to take or not take action? You may wish to watch again the video that I did on the who's who in their DMU and their decision making unit and also some of the videos around customer personas and customer segments. And this is about really understanding your customer saying, well, these are the behaviours that influence them. For those of you that have done the marketing audit seminar, we'll, you also know that external influence is effective. Obviously, we've seen this with the 2020 and 2021 COVID pandemic. That's had a massive impact on, on people's behaviour to buy or to make a purchase decision. So what are those behaviours and influences that affect your audience's decision to take or not take action? Based on that, how long does it then take them to move through the buyer's journey? How long is that journey for them? Which activities, which marketing activities are you doing and what outcomes are they coming together like that rope in a strong correlative association to create certain outcomes? So which activities are coming together to create certain outcomes? What happens if you stop one of those activities? Or stop all of those activities. So one of my favorite answers now, when people go, oh, we don't think your marketing works. They go, okay, stop it. They always look a bit mildly panicked at that response. And they look a bit incredulous. I go, that's fine. I said, stop it, you know, we'll just stop. And they go, oh, well, 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 well. Will we see any impact? And I go, yeah, you will. But in three months time, four months time, five months time, however long it is for people to move through the buyer's journey, if you stop doing the marketing activities, that is how long it will take to see the impact. It's like those organizations that when everything gets tight and worried, they stop on the marketing and they don't see an impact immediately. They go, oh, we didn't need marketing. There's no impact. You know, we've still got clients. We've still got a pipeline. What they don't realize is that actually it's that bottom half of the pipeline that's working its way through but it's not being replenished at the top. Those awareness activities aren't happening. The interest activities aren't being nurtured and looked after. So they will notice the impact eventually. So how long will it take before you notice the impact? So that's the end of our three videos. There was quite a lot in them. I do advise you to really take the space and time to consider them wherever you're at in your journey with marketing or in your journey with metrics. So thank you very much. I'm Cara Stanford and this is The Marketing Spaces.